Hello, <coughs> I'm Black Bright, broadcasting out the UK, and um, I talk on a variety of subjects. Um, today's subject is going to be about relationships. Somebody wrote me last night and they said they wanted me to talk a bit more about narcissism. I did a video on narcissism maybe about a couple of months ago, and um, they wanted a little bit more. I thing is, I've only known one narcissistic person, so I'm just going to go through that and what I've kind of researched on. Um, there are so many people who are victims of narcissistic relationships. Normally, it's people who are quite vulnerable, people who are giving, people who are warm, people who have a good heart. They're usually the people who fall victim to narcissists, believe it or not. It's not the cocky ones, the people who don't care about anybody. It's always the good-hearted people who fall victim to narcissists. And what happens is, is that narcissists feed off of the fact that these women, we'll talk about women for now, want to please them. And they they get a joy they almost get a delight in devaluing them and putting them down and making them feel like crap the more you do for a narcissist the more he'll treat you like crap what it comes from especially um they say that narcissists tend to push above their weight so they tend to go for people who they don't really deeply feel worthy of and because they don't feel worthy of that person they tend to try and keep them in their place put them down they never compliment they never say thank you they just literally um just fight crit criticize and put that person down constantly so if you haven't got a good sense of self self-esteem you don't put down boundaries you're going to be caught up into this um, web of trying to please somebody that you just cannot please and you're going to be in a situation where you're always giving and you're expecting that person to give back and they'll never give back so you have to be one of these people, I mean, it's not impossible. You don't have to leave a narcissist. You can live with them, but you have to set boundaries. Because um, it's no point saying if you're married to a narcissist, oh, it's best to leave them. I mean, it really depends on how um, bad their personality disorder is. I mean, is it manageable? Are you able, are you strong enough Um to cope with them? Do you have that sense of self-worth? Have you built up a sense of strength? Or do you still feel kind of weak and upset and, you know, you're on the verge of tears, you don't feel as though there's a, no one to talk to because you feel embarrassed? You know, it can it can happen like that because on the outside, people see you with this person and they're like, oh, you've got the most perfect relationship. When inside the relationship, you're hurting and you feel embarrassed to tell anyone because you don't know who to trust. So there are a lot of people in that situation. So where does narcissistic come from? I mean, why do they become like that? Normally, they're middle children. And their parents have kind of forgotten about them as the older child or the younger child comes into play. And so they're always trying to vie for their parents' attention and they never actually got it. And their parents could have been quite harsh. They could have been quite stern. They could have had high expectations. They either gave them a lot of compliments or they didn't give them any. And so these kind of children grew up confused and they kind of developed a sense of um, inflated self-worth. You know, they, they, they feel as though they're the bee's knees. Nobody's better than them. And but they do that by putting down other people. And apparently this comes from envy. I was listening to somebody. I can't remember his name, but I was listening to him and it really made sense. He said that narcissist, um, their emotion is envy. 
and they envy so many people. They don't realize they're envying them, but they envy anybody who's doing better than them. And because they envy them, they have to put them down and they hold them in contempt and they're very hostile towards them. So that's what happens with a narcissist. So if if, if you are married to a narcissist or you're in a relationship with a narcissist, it's about, and you want that relationship to work, it's about t toning down who you are. If, you, if you're quite accomplished, it's about not, let, not showing off in front of them. If you're looking for endorsement or acknowledgement or any kind of compliments, it means getting those kind of things from somebody else outside the relationship. Somebody might say, why would I bother to do all of that? I might as well just leave. Well, that's what I'm saying. It all depends what you can cope with. No point trying to reform a narcissist. They, they're non-reformable. You know, the more you try to tell them what to do, they go by their own rules. They don't listen to anyone and they feel that what they say goes and they, they have a sense of entitlement. They feel that they don't have to go by the rules. So it's a waste of time if you're trying to reform a narcissist and trying to bring him or her around to your way of thinking. Logic is not going to work. If you tell them their, their behavior is inappropriate, it's not going to work. So you just have to accept them for who they are. And as long as you don't allow them to bring you down or make you depressed or make you sad, um, then you can stay with them more or less. But if they start affecting your health and your sense of well-being, it's probably healthier to, to take um you know, a leap of faith and leave. A lot of people, they've got so caught up in these relationships, they find it difficult to leave. And there's always something in that narcissist when you're getting ready to leave that they know exactly, they know so much about you that they drag you back in. And so it's very, very difficult to get away from a narcissist. Anyway, I could put some points down. Um, so you've got them. Uh, the narcissist, is angry because he's driven by envy, tends to punch above his, his or her weight, then spends the rest of his time trying to put that person down to bring him or her down to a level where she or he feels comfortable. So they have to bring that person down to a level where they feel comfortable interacting with that person. And they can only do that by constantly criticizing them and, you know, denigrating them. Um, to compensate for that deep sense of, um, it's not nothingness, it's almost like inadequacy. To compensate that, that inflated sense of self, they, they demonstrate destructive behavior. Um, so they'll, you know, you better be strong because when they're ready to criticize you and, you know, put you down and find fault in everything you do, you need to be careful that it doesn't affect you. You need to be on that thing where no matter what they say, it's like water of a duck's back. If you're not in that, if you haven't reached that stage, you cannot cope with a narcissist. So you need to be resilient and strong. You can't be too kind or accommodating. Um, the origins of narcissism and self-view exaggerated sense of self-importance. They believe they're the best thing since sliced bread. Um, they'll believe that they are the best thing that happened to you. They'll always try to convince you. They'll always be saying, Am I the, I'm, I'm sure I'm the best person you've ever been out with. Or you're, you know, I'm the best husband you could ever imagine. You know, they'll always say that, even though they know that their behavior is contrary to that. So it's kind of bizarre, really. Um, and it leads them to feeling entitled to special privileges and special treatment. So they always feel as though they should get special treatment, even though they've done nothing to deserve it. <laughs> uh, tend to have no etiquette, no protocol, because they believe they're entitled to behave just the way they like. Um, they're preoccupied with fantasies of unlimited success. So they'll always be um, fantasizing of, you know, what they would do if they had maybe a million pounds or 
10 million pounds or whatever have an inflated sense of ego and it's not influenced by their day-to-day -day experiences so you know like uh, the majority of people if they make a mistake they learn by their mistakes or they um, tend to um, reflect on their behavior and narcissists don't tend to do that they don't see nothing wrong in what they're doing they put the blame on everybody else so it's as though you know it's not me it's it's them you know that kind of thing um, they desire to be seen by others by what they've achieved or own they can be very childlike um, they're the type of people who want a trophy wife you know somebody who looks good just to hang on their um, arm so that they look good um, they can have an air of arrogance and dominance. They tend to like flashy cars, pretty women. Um, they could could be a middle-aged children whose siblings took the lifeline. Oh, okay. Yeah, like I said before, normally it's, it stems from they are the middle children and their siblings took the limelight and they got pushed to the back. So they're always vying for attention. So in their adult life now, that's what they try to do. They try to get that attention. They try to become that person. You know, when they when they were just by themselves, they try to get that attention. So all the attention is on them. Um, they hold contempt for anyone who they envy. They don't often know that they're envying others. They have a deep fear of humiliation. I think I said that in my last video. Uh, strategies to deal with the narcissist who is out to devalue you. Um, if you've been living with a narcissist and feel, yeah, you need to know your vulnerabilities. You can't be with a narcissist and not know what makes you vulnerable because that's what you need to guard against because when a narcissist learns where your vulnerabilities are, that's where he or she is going to hone in and try to break you down. So you can't let a, a narcissist know your vulnerabilities, but you need to know them because you need to work on them. Um, so if you're empathetic, warm, get pleasure knowing what people need and fulfilling that need, you're going to feed that narcissist ego and feed whatever fuels them to, you know, to destroy you, basically. It's almost like they, they don't like the fact that you're good. Or they don't like the fact that you're kind or, you know, that kind of thing. It's most bizarre. Uh, prone to giving to others. Um, so for those people who are prone to giving to others, take pride and pleasure in pleasing other people, you'll be vulnerable to the narcissistic because you'll become their ego supply. Be aware of the emotions that the narcissistic project onto you negative feelings they disown aspects of themselves and put it onto others what narcissists tend to do is that they can feel bad about something and then they'll make you feel bad because they feel bad so whatever that they've done wrong or whatever ha has happened to them that's made them feel bad they'll project that onto you so you end up feeling bad and then they can feel better um so, and, and when things go wrong, or if they've done something bad or something wrong, they'll disown it. They, they'll have, it's almost like they, they didn't do nothing wrong. It's whoever. They'll blame it on someone else. They could even blame it onto you. And, could, you know, they tend to say things, that, you know, say they said something when they didn't and twist you up to make you think that, you know, something's gone wrong, you know, that you didn't hear right and that you're going crazy. That's what they tend to do. They tend to try and mix up everything so you can feel weak you lose confidence and all that kind of thing so you once you're aware of their tactics you know how to um, challenge it and how to protect yourself but if you're just being a pillow for them to punch psychologically then you will get pushed under and you won't you won't be a happy camper I can assure you so if you're left feeling confused, ashamed, you doubt your confidence, you're second guessing yourself, um, you, you find that you want to get even, there's feelings of rage, um, it's probably his emotion that he's projected on you. I was listening, I can't remember, I didn't take his name, but what is his 
um, he's really, really good. And he talks about narcissism along. It's like the reality psychologist or something. Yeah, I was listening to him and I got a lot of this information from there. But I found him really quite impressive. And I felt that, you know, since he'd asked me for this, I had to go to a source where I felt it was pretty credible. And he was pretty credible. You kind of hear, there's so many videos on narcissism. I can't believe it. I mean, are there that many narcissists out there? And the funny thing is, is that a lot of people, they don't even know they're in a narcissistic relationship. That's a sad thing. And if you don't know, you don't know how to protect yourself. And it can feel like crap and you don't know why. And that narcissist, he has the, he has the ability to build you up and push you down. So you need to be extremely careful not to allow him to manipulate your emotions. You can't make him responsible for how you feel. So you have to take care of yourself. You have to know who you are. You have to know your weaknesses and you have to strengthen yourself if you are going to remain with a narcissist. You can't let him get away with treating you like crap and talking to you anyhow and telling you you're ugly, telling you you're fat, finding something wrong with the clothes that you're wearing or your hair or whatever. I mean, yes, you can be in a loving relationship and people can say to you, you know, that doesn't look quite right or I don't like that or something. That's totally different. But it's a tone that they do it in, the denigrating tone to make you feel like crap. That's what you will have to watch out for. I'm not talking about in a loving relationship where, you know, you're just, you know, each partner is making observations of their partner and making suggestions. I'm not talking about that. Narcissists will say it in such an evil way to make you feel bad about yourself. That's the difference. Um, so, yeah, you need to understand your issues. Um, know if you have a low self-esteem or if you have a low sense of self-worth. Um, are you hypersensitive to criticism? The slightest little criticism that somebody says, do you react to it? If you do, you can't be with a narcissist. You cannot. And the funny thing is, those are the people who are attracted to narcissists because narcissists come over as really, really charming and sweet and perfect in the beginning. And then slowly as they draw you in, slowly, 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 they draw you in and once they've got you, that's it. They make sure they know everything about you. They make sure that you're in love with them. They make sure they've been introduced to all your family and friends. And when you feel safe and you think, yeah, I found the man of my dreams, they switch on you. So that's a narcissist. Um, what else? Yeah, so you will need to have worked on yourself to protect yourself from them um, because they're very good at picking up people with, who are vulnerable. And you need to have realistic expectations. Um, do not expect them, like I said, to um, don't expect a give and take relationship. Always expect to do the giving because they ain't giving you nothing unless it's in the initial stages to get something and to win you over. While they're trying to win you over, they'll give you the world. But once they got you, they'll make sure they get everything back. If they don't get it one way, they'll get it another way. Um, they're not empathetic, so if you're crying or if you're upset, they're not going to empathise with you. They can't empathise with you because they are their sole um, interest. Their only interest is in themselves and what they can do to make themselves feel better and look better. Um, so they don't understand other people's needs. Um, so, like they say, if you want to live with a if you want to have a relationship if you're in a relationship and you don't want to leave your narcissist you have to limit your accomplishments and talents in front of the narcissist because they're very envious like i said the most Im a main emotion is envy so um it's like a trade-off you can't since you know that they're envious even of their partners if you do if you if they feel that you are um better in quotes than them and they are envious of your achievements they're going to try and put you down or you know make you feel like you're an idiot or something so 
so you need to limit them and not show off or not um you know you can't be saying oh you know i've done this or oh i got you know a high grade at university or i've just been promoted or whatever it is because you're they're not going to be happy for you it's just going to make them think of ways to tear you down um keep your moves keep your cards close to your chest don't give away all your secrets don't reveal a lot about yourself um and don't try to reform them i've already said that they have so much invested in keeping their grandiose, entitled, arrogant and inflated sense of self afloat. Instead, impose appropriate boundaries. Work on yourself and your self-confidence. Learn to work on your vulnerabilities increase and increase your sense of self-awareness. Don't try to teach them how to be reciprocal. It won't work. To the normal person, they learn from their mistakes and it will improve them. However, narcissists are resistant to setbacks and failures. They disown experiences that might show that they have failed or shut their shortcomings and they'll blame someone else. They'll have a tantrum, they'll be irate, they'll get angry and they'll try to humiliate someone. Acknowledging a failure is or inadequacy is very threatening to a narcissist. So they can't acknowledge that they've failed or that they're inadequate in any way. Failure of self-reflection cannot admit that they're not smart enough. Feels a deep inner sense of shame and emptiness. If they accept it, they will destroy those who they perceive have contributed to their failure. So they're very easily disappointed in people. And when they're disappointed in that person, they'll devalue them. And it's funny because, you know, um, with narcissists, they can actually, in the beginning, place you on a pedestal. They have an idealistic view on you, a view of you. But if you let them down or if you disappoint them, that's it. There's trample all over you. Um, they'll express their rage and fantasies. If their fantasies are not being fulfilled, they'll give you the cold shoulder they humiliate you they'll have a vendetta against you they'll try to destroy your reputation and some of them um, are prone to domestic violence so you've got to be very careful because when they feel that they can't control you they'll try to control you with the fist so you've got to be extremely careful and they view people as an extension of themselves um, because they feel that whoever they're with represents them I think that's how I've interpreted this and narcissism is a severe personality disorder and it's increasing within our society so like i said i don't really um, know that much about it i had to look it up for that person i hope this helps um yeah and that's all about narcissism for now bye bye